Welcome back to the next video in our Thinkorswim tutorial series, where today we're gonna to be learning how to use paper money and on demand in order to practice our trading within Thinkorswim. Now, if you're watching this and you've never heard of paper money or on demand, these are essentially simulated accounts where we can practice our trading without risking any of our real money. Using either one of these is gonna be indistinguishable from the real version of Thinkorswim. So all the buttons are gonna be the same. When we place a trade, it's gonna look exactly the same. So all the skills we learn from this can then be directly applied to our live accounts once we're ready to do it for real. And you can actually see the account that I'm in right now is actually a paper money account. This account is completely simulated. Now, because it is paper money and not on demand, it is the real market right now. So if I look down here, I'm looking at Tesla at the moment. This is what Tesla is trading for right now in real life. And if I were to come up here and place a trade, so let's say we want to buy 100 shares of Tesla right now using a market order, we can see if I place this, it's going to fill immediately at the exact same price we would probably have gotten in a real account. So right now we can see down here the trade price, what we bought it for, 298.24. And we can see the mark price or the current price of the stock constantly changing. Then if we wanted to sell it, just like before, we right click, create a closing order. And once we sell it, we can now see our profit or loss right down here below. But like I said, it's going to work exactly how it would work for your real Thinkorswim account once you're ready. But I think we skipped ahead just a little bit. So in order to actually access this, in order to get logged into your paper money account, what we need to do is go ahead and pull up Thinkorswim just like normal. As soon as you pull up Thinkorswim, you're going to be met with the exact same login window you've probably seen a hundred times. But before we log in, we need to come down here below and toggle it over to paper money. You can see it also changes the background to this goldish color, and that'll be a common theme. So later on, once we're back in Thinkorswim, look around and look for that golden border because that's how you can quickly tell that we're in a paper account and not a real account. But once we flipped it over to paper money, we're simply going to use the exact same login ID and the exact same password that we normally use to log in, and then go ahead and log in. Now, once you're in there, the way you're going to be able to quickly identify that this is a simulated account or the paper account is simply by looking up here in the upper left-hand corner, or first off, it does say simulated trading, Looking down below, it also tells you these are simulated values. So these are not real values. And you can also see a gold border going across the entire platform. But just be careful with that. You obviously don't want to place any trades in this account thinking it's a real account or vice versa. So just be mindful of that before you place any real trades. While we're in here, I'll also mention that you can change the buying power figures or the amount of money that you're trading with in these paper money accounts. Now, to do that, we do have to head over to the monitor page. And currently, if you look up here, I do have the margin account selected, and you will need to select one in order to change the balance. So in this case, I am fine with the margin account being selected, so we'll go ahead and leave that be. And now if I wanted to change the balance information, what I have to do is come over here to the far right-hand side of my monitor page and click on this button that says Adjust Account. From here, you're going to see a little account adjustments pop-up window here, and this is where we can change our balance. Now, I didn't show it to you before, but all paper money accounts come preloaded with $100,000. So if I wanted to change that, I could just click on this little toggle here and then select a new balance, or I could just type in the balance I wanted if it's not in this list here. So if I only wanted to have $10,000 in this account, let's go ahead and type in 10,000, hit enter on the keyboard, and now to have that take effect, I'll just come down below and hit apply. If I ever need to completely reset the account, if I've made a blunder and I just want to start over, start fresh, I could always come back up to that adjust account just like before. But this time, come down below where it says reset all balances and positions, hit apply. And once I confirm that I do actually want to do this, you're actually going to see all the account activity reset. So it's essentially like we're going to be starting fresh with a blank slate. But again, this is the paper money version of Thinkorswim. So it is simulating the real market right now, but it's entirely fake money. Now, if you instead wanted to simulate the market sometime in the past, maybe you wanted to backtest a strategy, or maybe you just wanted to simulate when the market was open because maybe it's the weekend and obviously we can't trade on the weekends. What we actually need to do in order to accomplish that 
is actually get out of paper money and log into our live accounts. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. They hit. They hit. They hit. And I know it might not be noticeable, but I did just flip over to my live account. So we can see up here at the top, I don't have a little gold border going around my platform. Up here in the upper left, it no longer says simulated trading. And if I didn't have my balances hidden down here below, I of course don't have that exact $100,000 that paper money comes preloaded with. But now that I'm in my live account, if I wanted to simulate the market sometime in the past, what I need to do is come up here to the upper right hand corner of the platform and click on on demand. It'll then give me this little disclosure telling me that everything we're about to do is fake, it is simulated, and I'm just gonna hit okay here. And it will take a second to load all the data from that day in the past that we have selected. But once it's done, this price up here is the exact price of Apple at the time we have selected. Now, the date we have selected, we can see up here in the upper right hand corner is currently October 22nd at 9.16 in the morning. But if I wanted to adjust that, and let's say we did, we're going to go ahead and click on it. And looking down here, let's say I wanted to start backtesting a particular strategy. And to give myself a little bit of time, I'm going to go back to January, a little bit far. And we'll go ahead and pick January 3rd of 2024. So now that I've selected the date, I could also come down below and change the time if I wanted to. But for right now, I'm okay with it being 916 in the morning. So now to have that take effect, we'll come over here and hit go. Like before, it is going to take a second to load, and I can tell it's loading because up here in the upper left, it currently says pre-buffering. Once that message goes away, we are now looking at what Apple was trading for on January 3rd at 9.16 in the morning. So in this case, we can see Apple was trading for $184 even, and we can see it's constantly changing just like it did on January 3rd. If we go ahead and flip it over to, let's say, Tesla for a second... Just like before, it's giving us that little pre-buffering message up here saying it is loading all that data. But once it's loaded, let's say I wanted to see if I did this trade today and then fast forwarded in time two weeks, how would this trade have done? So we'll go ahead and buy 100 shares real quick. Now that we bought it and right down here, I can see I've got 100 shares at 237.08. To fast forward, we'll simply come back up here to the date in the upper right hand corner. We'll go ahead and fast forward to January 17th. So two weeks in time. And now looking at Tesla, it looks like it fell quite a bit in that two week time frame. We can see it's currently trading at 213.67. So if I went over to my monitor page, which remember gives me a breakdown of everything in my account right now, we can see here in this simulated or on demand account, remember we bought 100 shares of Tesla at 237.08. Currently it's 213.94. So in that two week time frame, I have lost $2,324 on this trade. If we wanted to close it, we would simply close it in the exact same way we would do it in a real account, simply creating a closing order and then selling those 100 shares of Tesla. In this case, I'll use a limit order at 213.36. That one happened to fill right away, but going back to my monitor page, you'll see we are now out of that position. And then eventually, once I'm done and I want to go back to my real account, I'm done practicing, I'm done using paper money, all I have to do is come back up to the upper right and click on On Demand again. You can see that immediately puts me back into my real account, and these are all my real positions. So now if I place a trade right now, it's going to be for real. It's going to be my real money. Now, the only thing I'll mention before you guys actually start practicing using this thing, I mentioned before that the trades fill pretty accurately to what we would expect you would actually fill at. But the only real caveat to that is if the stock or option or future or Forex, whatever it is you're trading, is incredibly illiquid. If nobody's trading that thing that you're trying to trade, it could give you a completely unrealistic price that you would have never gotten in real life. So just be mindful of that. If you're about to trade something that has an incredibly wide bid-ask spread, probably you're not going to get a real-life fill or a realistic fill like you would have in your real account. Nothing too crazy, just something to think about when you're placing your trades in here. But hopefully that helped, and I would really recommend all of you practice everything we learned before doing it in your real account. If you're still interested in learning, do check out this next video in the series where we're going to be learning how to use the stock scanner to find potential trades. Go ahead and click the video below. And I'll see you there.